Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Swiss Scissor One video. In today's video, we are in uh, the infamous China. You know, China is a, a very, very much large country with a lot of different uh, biomes. And well, mountains are very, very present. And uh, today, let's actually go to these mountains. Yes. Today we are in the region of Xiushan in China, which has very, very tall mountains and very, very high elevation, which is, by the way, the point of this video. Yes, this is Daoqing Yadin Airport, or Yading, I don't know, which is the highest airport on this planet at 4,411 meters of elevation. That's 14,472 feet, which is crazy, definitely. I mean, like, this airport is, like, taller than most mountains in the Alpine region. And uh, yeah, this is just casually an airport. And yes, this airport, it is very, very modern. It was built in 2013, uh, which you can definitely see here in the terminal as well. This is a very interesting looking one. This actually, uh, it, it, this is supposed to be a flying saucer with two arrow bridges. <laughs> Let me just mention a flying saucer is basically what we know as a UFO. This is very interesting indeed. Uh, so yeah, this is a very recent airport. It isn't the biggest one. It is designed to have a capacity of around 280,000 passengers per year. We only have a pretty small ramp and space for like, like eight aircraft or something. This is not the largest aircraft in the world, but it is definitely the highest one indeed. And yes, building this airport was very, very much essential, I would say. You know, actually before this airport was built, in order to travel to this place, you would have to take a bus and that would take around two days. Let me just mention that two day bus trip is something that you not, might not want to do, right? These days, it is only a one hour trip on an Airbus. Was, was that a good pun? Whatever, okay. <clears throat> now, yeah, what kind of planes actually do fly here at the highest airport in the world? Uh, actually, it's only A320s so far. So planes around this size, this is a 737-800. But yeah, you cannot really go bigger than planes like this at this place. But we'll figure out why that is later on. So that is that. Um, what is that in the skies? I think that's I think that's the space shuttle flying here just casually. I mean, that's just what happens in China, isn't it? Let's go ahead and uh, take off, right? Or at least try doing that. Now, yes, you may wonder what happens when you build an airport at this kind of elevation. How does it affect the flying of the planes here? That's actually a pretty good question. And, uh, well, something that we can obviously tell about this airport already, that it has an enormous runway. This runway is 4,200 meters long. That is around 13,700 feet, which is definitely quite crazy. I mean, that's almost as large as the elevation of this place, right? This is really an enormous runway, uh, normal international airport runways that have like A380s flying, have runways of like a, like 3,000 to 3,500 meters. That's like the usual kind of length that you have on a runway. But no, this is 4,200 meters long. And uh, the reason for that is actually quite simple. You know, we've talked about things like this a lot. The higher you go in elevation, the worse your plane will perform. Was that a grammatically correct sentence? I think so. So that means the higher your airport is, the longer your runways should be. But let's actually go ahead and do the practical flying test here, right? I mean, you know, the 737, it should be able to operate just fine. But even in planes like this, taking off can be a little bit of an issue. But let's go ahead and uh, do that. Uh, there we go. We're looking good. 14,000 feet. Actually, the cabin pressurization is turned on because <laughs> otherwise there might actually be a good chance of blacking out because of hypoxia. You know, there's not a lot of oxygen up here in the mountains and there's a weird bump in the runway. Oh, goodness. All right. Actually, we do have a red warning light down here saying that our cabin altitude is a little high. I mean, honestly, how do people live up here? Whatever. Uh, let's just care more about taking off. That can actually be a little close. All right, 80 knots. 90 knots, oh goodness, 100 knots, 111, I think we might actually make this, but we are actually using the whole runway, all right, perfect, there we go, oh, come on, this plane's definitely struggling to take off, oh goodness, this is scary, Jesus Christ, oh please, just enter a stable flight, 
Okay. God damn it. All right, we're 100 foot above the ground. This is looking good. And we are entering a little bit of a climb at least, so that's fine. But damn, this was a really, really scary takeoff. This was a solid takeoff run of like two minutes. Jesus Christ. Here's what that looked like. Let me just mention the 737 can easily take off on like a 1300 meter long runway, which is like one fourth of this one. <laughs> and for this takeoff, we used the whole runway with a tail strike. I really tried pushing this takeoff, but it... Oh wow, that was almost a crash as well, Jesus. So that is the problems that come with operating at such a high elevation. I mean, again, how do people live here? Jesus Christ. But let's go ahead and move on to maybe a, a bigger plane. Maybe that's not the smartest idea, but let's do it anyway. Uh, 767. Now, yes, as of right now, there are three airlines flying here. There's our China, China Southern, and Sichuan Airlines, which is like the airline of the region. And they connect this place with a, a few places in China. I don't, I'm not really motivated to mention all of them, but you know. They all fly specialized version of the Airbus A320 family, which is interesting. Also, the pilots flying here need special certification. All right, welcome aboard the 767. Oh, goodness. All right. We have a lot of terrain warnings here, and that's quite normal here in the mountains. Now, see, landing should not be that much of an issue, especially the stopping part of landing, because, you know, the braking systems are not that much affected by the high elevation, so I'm pretty hopeful that this will be a successful landing, right? <clears throat> the actual hard part will definitely be the takeoff after this landing. All right, let's just go ahead and land. Oh, goodness. All right, planes down. Let's stop. Oh, with a really, really bad landing, by the way. Let me just say that. All right, we do hear clapping in the background, which is appreciated, always. Let's go ahead and stop, which is actually happening. All right, see, landing is not that big of an issue. Oh, oh, right. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, not, not the best one, but we did stop. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, triple seven. <laughs> This uh, is gonna be interesting as well. All right, welcome aboard the much bigger 777. Talking about bigger, we have some very thick GE90 engines on here that might actually help us take off. This will be a close call, but let's just do it. All right, come on. What is it complaining about now? All right, the plane, it is going, so that is good. I mean, you know, this is a 4,200 meter long runway. It would be quite ridiculous if this didn't work out, right? Uh oh, uh oh. Take off. Oh, would be quite ridiculous if this didn't work out, right? That was a solid overrun, Jesus Christ. All right, so this didn't work out at all, did it? We just totally crashed our 777. That is very interesting. Despite a runway this long, this plane cannot take off. I would have actually never thought that elevation would affect a plane's performance this much, but it, it does, apparently. Uh, maybe uh, going bigger will help, right? <laughs> totally, totally. 747, I guess? All right, we'll come aboard the 747. This will definitely work out. No, this is definitely not gonna work. Four engines are running up full power. Let's see if we can do this. Again, this is so interesting how a runway this long still is not long enough for big planes like this. But let's see, I do feel like we're gaining a little bit of more speed compared to the 777, so maybe this can work out as well. Okay. Oh, goodness. Please, just take off finally. Jesus Christ. Oh, no. All right, this didn't work out either, did it? So what can we say about Yadin Daocheng Airport? It is very interesting. Again, uh, I would have never thought that an elevation affects a plane's performance this much. But definitely, we only have 737s or A320s allowed here. No bigger planes than that, because you, you'll die if you do. Uh, so yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.